All right, guys, so here's the review of the Aerotech Coral Bay. So this is a watch that's going to be launching on Kickstarter in October. Not sure of the exact date just yet. When I find out, I'll leave it down in the description and probably pin a comment as well. Just, um, you know, if you're interested. So I've been trying it out for a while. It's a pretty interesting piece. It's like a vintage retro style. So not going to be to everyone's taste, but if you're into that kind of thing, I think this is definitely going to be a really nice one. Even if you're not, this could be one that you might possibly like. Because like I say, it's it's a pretty nice one. So, full disclosure, I was sent the watch for loan, obviously, to review it. But I don't get to keep it, so no need for any of that. But, question is, are you going to want one? Is it any good? Let's get down to it and find out. So, here's the box it comes in, with the Aerotech branding on. It is actually a pretty substantial box as well. I'll show you what we get inside. So we've got... A few little bits in the side here. We've got the warranty card, so you got a one year warranty. Then we've also got there's a suede leather strap here. This actually won't be included when you actually back it on Kickstarter. This will be like an optional extra. It is quite nice though. It's got the Aerotech low one there. And then a nice bit of stitching. And it is actually quick release as well. So they've told me that that's going to be a 39 Australian dollar extra. So that works out to about $29 or £21. And then the only other thing we've got in there is the links I've taken out. So you can see we've got brushed centre links, polished outer links, and it's just push pins. But I'll get all that out of the way now, and then we'll talk about the actual watch and the actual box. So, it's quite a nice box. Like a leather air finish. Again, with the branding, some stitching. And then, here's the watch itself. Nothing else in here, just the watch. And here's the watch. So, really nice looking piece, I think. Definitely something a bit different. So, just going to zoom in on that dial. So, we can see in a little bit more detail. So, we've got... Some really nicely finished hands. That was the first thing that jumped out at me. Really nicely done. High polish finish. Really clean. No marks on it at all. And then I also really like that date window down at the six. A little detailing around that. And then you can see the side of that we've got 200 meters, 660 feet. And then with the second hand, that's quite interesting as well. So we've actually got the lollipop and then the counterbalance with the red. Just a little splash of colour. And then the indices at the 12, 3, 6 and the 9 are all really nice as well. Especially that one in the 12, the detailing on that. And I do like the applied logo as well. It does look really good. Just kind of ties in with the rest of the design as well. That retro kind of look. It's just all really nicely finished. And then we've got a nice sunburst on that as well. It's actually a brushed finish as well. So it's like a brushed sunburst. So they did quite a few different colours of this. Obviously this blue one, a red one as well. Then they also do a white mother of pearl and a black mother of pearl. So I'll probably leave pictures on screen so you can see what all of those are like. Some really interesting ones. So quickly zoom back out, and then we'll talk about the bracelet quickly. Briefly touched on it before, like I said, brushed centre links, polished outer links, and that continues onto the case. So the top of the lugs are actually brushed, uh, polished, sorry, to match. And then the side of it is just brushed. And then we've got a nice coin edge bezel. And the crown. It's got that interesting detailing on it. Just going to zoom in so you can see it a bit better. Again, with the logo in there, that's really nice and grippy. Don't no issues at all. But we'll talk about that a bit more later on because there is something quite good with that. So the movement in this is a Miota 9015, so it's high beat movement, hence that sweep in second hand. When it comes to the bezel. It's 120 click ceramic bezel. Tiny bit of play in it, but not really anything to complain about. 
and the action is really nice. Lines up nicely as well. So no issues there. And I do like that they've got the, well, faux patina, I guess, kind of colour. Some people don't like that. I actually quite like it. I think it suits the style of watch as well. It's not overly done. I think they've done just the right amount. So quickly talk about the clasp on it. So it's just a standard clasp really. Nothing too special, but it's got the branding on it. Got three levels of micro adjust, got the fold over and then double pushes. And it's a milled clasp. The case back, however, is actually pretty nice. So we've got that nice design on the back of that. And then we've got the Aerotech, actually the 9015 automatic, 200 meters, and then stainless steel. And then obviously it's a screw down case back. You can probably also see as well, we've actually got quick release spring bars on this. So this is the first time I've actually seen quick release spring bars on a bracelet. So I was actually quite interested to try these out. But I did notice a bit of an issue. You could probably see if I get it side on like that. They aren't the easiest to access. So trying to get that with your finger or your thumb, it's a little bit fiddly. So when I was changing out to try out that strap, I ended up having to use like a little, I think I used the end of a pen, well, a pen lid to try and do it in the end. It was a bit awkward to do with my hands. So perhaps they could sort something out with that. Or maybe it's just me. Let me know if you've tried one out before that's got those. Because like I say, it's the first time I've tried them. I'll quickly show you the crystal on this, because it is a really nice dome on that. And it's actually a double dome crystal as well. So really nice. And it is actually, as they say on the back, sapphire. So let's test it out. Using the trusty diamond slides too. And yep. Yeah. It is sapphire crystal, so that's good. Even though it is a vintage style, I do like that they've updated that, as well as that bezel as well being ceramic. I know some people would have preferred it probably to be aluminium, but again, it's personal taste. I actually prefer it. So now I'll show you what the loom's like on this. So you can see it glowing a little bit there already, but let's charge it up, see exactly what we're dealing with. Because it is pretty cool, the loom on this. I was pleasantly surprised when I first tried it out. And there it is. So, plenty of loom on that. On the bezel and the indices. Slight difference in colour between the hands and the indices, which is a little bit odd. Considering they say on the list in, uh, on their site it's all C3. So perhaps that's to do with the faux patina. It's probably changing the colour slightly, the tone, ever so slightly. But it lasts a good amount of time anyway, so you're not going to worry about it. Although it is slightly different colours. It's really, really a good loom. Definitely usable. And it just looks cool as well. And then, that was the bit I was telling you about earlier. So we've actually got the crown loomed as well. Which is a nice touch. And it just, it's a really cool looking piece, I think. So now let's talk about the dimensions on this. So we've got a thickness of 13.6, diameter of 40, lug width of 20. Now with the lug to lug, because we've got male end links, it's actually going to be slightly larger than the actual lug to lug. So the lug to lug is 48, but if you include those male end links, although they do curve down quite considerably, then you still stick out a little bit beyond. So if you measure from them, it comes out more at 51.8. But I'll show you now what it's like on wrist. So you can see that it doesn't wear as large as that. So this is what it looks like on my 7 inch wrist. And like I say, it does wear quite nicely. Because you've got quite a bit of curvature to those lugs. And also quite a lot of curvature to those male end links. So it doesn't wear as large as that look well end link to end link measurement is where it's more like the lug to lug despite having the male end links so I do really like this one like I say I love that kind of design if I was being a little bit nitpicky I 
probably would have preferred it to be all brushed or possibly all brushed with like chamfer details on the edges maybe not overly keen on the polished link bits but I guess it goes with the rest of the design be interesting to see how it holds up though once it gets worn a bit maybe gets scuffed up slightly but I'll quickly show you now what it's like on the suede leather strap so this is what it looks like on the suede leather strap the optional one and I know some people think you shouldn't have a diver on a leather strap but I think with this one in particular it does really really suit it and let's be honest how many of us actually do take our divers diving I suspect it's probably not that many so the question you're probably wondering now is how much is this going to be costing so the super early bird on the Kickstarter is going to be 479 Australian dollars which works out to about 356 US dollars and about 257 pounds so it's not a cheap watch but it's a really original design I think it's got a nice high beat movement and I just think if it's, this is the kind of style you like you're not gonna be able to find this anywhere else or anything similar really so I definitely recommend it as long as you're willing to pay that kind of price but that's it for this one guys thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one